So there you have it. That's the first conversation we're having this morning along the lines of the Omicron variant of COVID-19. And so many countries locking up. And uh, of course, as you see on the front page of one of the papers this morning, in some countries, they're already restricting movement of their own people, lockdown. And of course, the people are already protesting and saying they do not want any more of that. What is our own response here in this country. There are those who are already saying, if you look at the, remember what we saw on the front page of the Guardian newspaper, and I think one or two others this morning, that look, if other countries are locking away Nigerians, are locking out Nigerians, or any other African country, then Nigeria should also reciprocate and lock them out as well. How many cases do we have in Nigeria? As yesterday, we understand it's just six. In the UK, we understand it's about uh, 80 cases of the Omicron variant specifically. So there are those who are asking, who should be locking who out? Well, what do we know? Let's ask some questions from our guest in Abuja. Okay. Well, thank you, Ayo. We have with us Dr. Akilia Ishaku, who is a virologist, a public health epidemiologist, a senior lecturer of biological science department at Nasarawa State University, Kefi, and also a member of the West African Consortium to prepare West Africa for the conduct of clinical trials of drugs, vaccines against TB, AIDS, and malaria. Uh, Dr. Shaku, you're welcome to Sunrise Daily this morning. Thank you, Mayokwe, for having me. Well... I don't know if you have been following this, uh, the, the outbreak of Omicron since South Africa, um, you know, raised the alarm about the discovery of a new variant of COVID-19. It would seem that even though the U.S. president has said it's, it's cause for concern, not cause for panic, but it would seem that what, the response we have seen has been more panicky than that of concern. Um, how are you reading how countries have responded to the outbreak of this new variant? Yeah, so the response in terms of the new protocols. Okay, okay, yeah. But I, so I think um, um, it's quite key for us to understand uh, that um, most, especially RNA viruses, uh, not DNA viruses, uh, changes over time. They undergo what is referred to as mutation, uh, either from human to human transmission or from human to animal transmission. Sometimes most of these viruses, when they even have an encounter with the environment, they change their makeup as they begin to multiply or grow. So um, it was quite, uh, I, I didn't see it as a surprise because the former prime minister of UK said uh, uh, the West seems to be very safe with COVID, uh, but there will be a new variant. I was saying that four weeks ago that there will be new variants that will emerge from Africa or Asia. And then in less than four weeks, we're having the Omicron variant. So um, it was quite good. I want to commend the scientists uh, in, in Botswana and South Africa for doing a very good job. Although there has been debate on whether we should be sharing scientific and very very sensitive and valid information now to the rest of the world since um, uh, they also discovered the Omicron variant and then uh, they have been sanctioned, they have been banned and, and all what have you. So I, I think it is in good direction. Countries are taking measures, uh, optimizing and, you know, reviewing their protocol. Uh, I think what the U.S. and the U.K. are doing is a very smart public health measures. Uh, some people will criticize it, but they are saying that, hey, look, we are having a very new uh, uh, variant coming in. Uh, we, we don't know much about it, but we want to protect the well-being of our people. Uh, can we also limit how you come in? Uh, but we don't do uh, we don't do a lot of uh, our surveillance uh, in in this part of the world is a bit weak is passive not active they don't trust our surveillance system uh, you can see the criterion of uh, uh, COVID-19 uh, vaccination cuts you can see Canada rejecting our PCR you know test and all what have you these are, are, are products these are outcomes of a weak uh, and a very passive surveillance system so I think I want to commend them for taking that measures because if you understand the, the countries that have taken absolutely those if you understand the dynamics of change
changes in weather. I've been in Europe for over seven years, and I know that during this winter period, even without COVID, there are cases of fluke, there are outbreaks of fluke, uh, more so that is associated with COVID. Um, uh, so uh, they are also afraid that this Omicron variant affects younger population. The Delta variants affect older population, and they, so they are also afraid to say, oh, our productive age will be affected by this variant. So let us study it more. Let us come up with novel interventions to break the chain of transmission and to also understand it better. Um, um, so I hold this opinion, the school of thought, that uh, it was a very smart public health measures put in place. Mm. Mm. Well, you said something about how you know, scientists, you commended the, South, the scientists in uh, Southern Africa, Botswana and, the, and South Africa, but you said that the, the measures which they've taken right now could discourage the sharing of information. Isn't that correct? Absolutely. Um, and I think the World Health Organization already raised the same concern, that if the world were to take this sort of move, what it would mean is that a lot of um, scientists will now begin to conceal information Absolutely. if they know that this is what Absolutely. the response will be. Absolutely. Um, so when scientists do discover something then, what exactly do they expect world leaders to do? Um, how, how do they expect them to react? Yeah, absolutely, to take certain policies and measures and, you know, which are translated to interventions. Mm -hmm. and, um, Should it be translated to how what countries perceive to be punishment. Yeah, so th those, those are the negative impacts. So you have to look at this thing as, as a coin, which is a legal tender. You look at it from both sides, look at it from the positive uh, perspective angle of it, and you also look at it from the negative. Uh, so we commend them for doing that. Uh, but now we come to think of it that COVID was discovered in Africa. Africa would have been shot you know, uh, from the rest of the world. And those are the things that we are conversing, even as, as, as young scientists emerging in Africa, that can we have a continental agenda of vaccine equity? Uh, yeah, you find out that most of this uh, uh, Western world, they have holded vaccines, COVID vaccines. In fact, over six billion US dollar vaccine will expire by December. They have gone into booster doses. They have started vaccinating their children. Only 7% of African population are vaccinated. If you, we don't discuss about vaccine equity, no country in the world is safe. So we must begin to discuss that narrative and bring it to the But to the, the vaccination front doesn't exactly stop the viruses from mutating. Uh, it, so it, what it does is that it reduces chances of transmission, one. It also, also, of course, it reduces chances. If it reduces chances of transmission, then to some extent it reduces the mutation dynamics of it. And so it also reduces the severity of the diseases and confer herd immunity. So uh, a vaccine, it, it's not to actually stop the mutation, but it reduces the chances of the virus being undergoing mutation. You know? What is quite interesting is that it, with this particular variant, much as the South African authorities were the ones who raised alarm, uh, an alarm, we also heard from the Netherlands that they, in fact, had discovered Omicron, the Omicron variant, way before South Africa discovered it. Absolutely. So in the, in the light of that information, should we be seeing the sort of protocols that we're seeing being taken by other countries? So, so people will look at this in, in, in the light of racism, in the light of, uh, okay, uh, so we just need to ban people coming from the underdeveloped world and all what have you. What the Netherlands, uh, the Dutch government did was that to actually subject their, their, their genomic surveillance into protocols. You know, um, so for every scientific experiment that you carry out, there are protocols. Um, uh, so we are discussing last night that also the South African and the Botswana uh, government, health sciences, actually uh, jumped certain protocols. It was good that they announced it on time, the new variant, but they have to follow certain protocols and then you have to look at i think there are about seven steps for you to also notify the who i think they jump about two or three of the protocols so the dutch government what they did was actually to be sure to be sure to be sure they weren't too certain about 
whether it is the, the precision and accuracy of their surveillance system was about 86 percent they needed to up because the who protocol said you have to update it to about 90 90 to 92 percent so they have to wait they have to bring you know experts to review it and then before they forwarded it in fact they forwarded their 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 findings to the technical group on vax on viruses evolution a week before the south african Botswana dictated theirs in fact Botswana dictated the the variant among diplomats the, so the question my is that why is it that they did not tell us the identity of the foreign diplomats those are the things that we need to discuss so are they concealing the identity of the diplomats uh, so those so once you have a public health pandemic threat that is global in nature we need to see how we can be able to follow protocols in order to go into scientific information sharing in the light of that information, shouldn't anything change in terms of how leaders react? Because I, I know that, yes, there's a scientific part, which is the part you are particularly concerned Absol absolutely. about. Absolutely. <laughs> but it will seem that with, with COVID now, it has political implications. Uh, and scientists cannot say, oh, you know, that's not really our field. That's now left for political actors. But when, you, when you, they rely on advice from scientists, uh, one would have to question again, you know, the, the, the reaction that they have, the steps that they have now taken to react to that information, it doesn't seem to be logical. Yeah, so, I, I, so yeah, you can look at it from a mirror and say that it is not logical, but uh, scientifically it is logical. Scientifically it is logical. Uh, because, uh, you know, it's just, um, uh, we, and that's why we are calling on the Nigerian government to tighten up the surveillance system in Nigeria because we are entering into a festive season because we have not yet experienced our fourth wave. We are entering into a festive Christmas season that is characterized by outbreaks of Lassa fever, that is characterized by outbreaks of meningitis. We have not yet finished with the cholera outbreak. Is that okay? So we are like, a pandemic in an epidemic or an epidemic in a pandemic so we just need to take certain measures it's not going to be long yeah this is a new virus we are trying to understudy it we are trying to uh, look at it how does it behave uh, how does it you know get transmitted from one person to another what is the mortality rate what in fact in nigeria we have not even done mortality surveillance to look at how many people are dying yes we have the figure what is responsible for their death what are the comorbidities associated with that are they are, you know most of this uh, case fatality rate are they associated with vaccine intake or are they associated with non-vaccination we just need to come up with detailed scientific positions on this so i I'm, um, so it's not about taking a hard decision i know even the ban from the uk government and the U u.s government is not going to last three weeks to a month because they just wanted to understand and actually mark this is a very volatile uh, season in, in, in the West because of winter, and you know that viruses thrive more uh, in winter season. So um, I agree with you that certain uh, policies uh, from scientific uh, inferences needs to be, you know, be given allowances for more uh, uh, this thing to be done. But I, 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 in all honesty, if you, if you, if you, my personal candid opinion is that it is was a smart public health measures. To be, because you can look at the economic impact, you can look at if it affects a younger population, you can look at how many people, if they are down, they will be out of their productive, you know, time to work and all what of you. So a lot of health economics implication is being, you know, factor in into taking certain policies. Okay, let's flip this to Lagos now. I understand my colleague Ayo has uh, questions for you. Well, thank you. Thank you, Malkwe. Uh, doctor, uh, let me have your response to this uh, statement attributed to uh, another scientist, uh, Dr. Jonathan Obaje uh, in Singapore, who said, and I quote, we now have enough scientific capabilities to confirm in one more week whether or not Omicron variant is less lethal than Delta variant. So far, many reports from across the globe indicate so. He went further to say that um, in the event that Omicron is confirmed less lethal, scientific, expe scientific expe expedient action thereafter will be for everyone to open gates 
for Omicron to quickly spread and become dominant globally, Omicron will then become the new harmless COVID-19 virus. Do you agree with him? Actually, uh, the audibility is been, so can you come again, sir? Sorry. <laughs> What uh, this scientist is saying is Omicron has been found to be far less lethal than the Delta variant. And if that is the case, everyone, let, let all nations open their gates so that it can become another far less lethal you know, variant of the COVID-19 as has been done before of the previous coronavirus diseases. Uh, so, if uh, Omicron is, is less uh, lethal compared to Delta variants, uh, other nations should open their gates for other people to come in. That's um, the... Yeah, uh, uh, so um, we must also understand um, uh, the dynamics when we are comparing uh, two variants of uh, emerging viruses, most especially of SARS-CoV-2. Um, I did not solely align my thoughts to that. This is because, like I shared with Maokwe some few minutes ago, uh, we do not really understand the pathology, the pathogenesis of these new variants. Uh, in fact, data that has been relied solely on, 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 on the South African population, you know, uh, literatures coming up from uh, case series analysis, cohort case studies from South Africa, shows that uh, it is more among university students, so among the younger population. Uh, it does not confer uh, more hospitalization, uh, longer hospitalization stay. Uh, it also does not, the effectiveness of this variant does not impair diagnostic uh, 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 technique. Uh, it means that the, the testing panels that we have can be able to take care of the variant. Oh, also, it does not confirm less effectiveness on the vaccine that we have. It shows that this vaccine can be able to uh, take care of the new variant. So I did not actually align my thoughts to that because uh, it, is, it is a virus, it is a pandemic that is ongoing, and we need to have time to study this. This is because if we open, if, if we even... Nigeria as a country, if we open up to other nations to come in, uh, we, we will have an explosion because we have not yet met up with the 40% uh, COVID vaccination target by the WHO. We are around 10 to 8, 8 to 9 percent, you know, the uh, 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 target rate. So I strongly believe that we need to tighten up uh, certain uh, uh, measures, which are quite key. Uh, is it can be temporal, but it is to prevent the well-being of the nations. So, in all honesty, I go with that smart move for uh, public health interventions. Then you will also remember, well, you may be aware that even in the UK, you know, opinions seem divided as to whether or not the, 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 the closures, the, the, the travel restrictions should even be uh, as, as it is now, because already, according to the president of the Royal, Medi uh, Royal um, School of Emergency Medicine in the UK, uh, she said as far as she's concerned, uh, the Royal College of Emergency Medicine, they, she said, as far as she's concerned, the travel restrictions came too late. But, uh, you know, merge that, juxtapose that information with the fact that in the UK, they have recorded something in the region of 60 to 80 uh, cases of Omicron already, but in Nigeria, we've only recorded six. So there are those who are wondering, what's going on here? Is, it, is this really medicine? Is, it, is this really about medicine or about politics? So you cannot separate medicine from politics, uh, right? or you can also separate politics from medicine. So we have the international public health politics uh, coming into play. Um, so what I just want to um, make uh, a submission here is that, um, you know, 
we cannot just compare that because UK had uh, 15 to 18 cases of Omicron and Nigeria, we just discovered six. Uh, uh, why, why, why should we, the UK locked its uh, doors to, to, to Nigeria and also banned vis visitors' visa? The, the, the issue here is that how active is our surveillance system? How active is our surveillance system? We cannot compare the surveillance system of the United Kingdom with that of Nigeria. Uh, in fact, uh, I, I hope you are, you are aware that we, 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 the Omicron variants that we got from Nigeria are retrospective. The samples that we have gotten three to, to four weeks ago, uh, we have not yet looked at people that came into the country some few days ago from high risk country. So our, our surveillance system is retrospective. Epidemiologically, it is passive in nature. So we cannot make comparison based on the number of cases alone. We should also make comparison based on public health interventions. We should also make comparison based on the activeness of our surveillance system. Um, a few weeks or, ago... Or you're just speculating that maybe we have it. Just a second, Dr. Kiara. Can you confirm that indeed we haven't, this that you're talking about now has not been done, or you're just assuming that there is a likelihood that we haven't done it? It was done in retrospect. It was Can you confirm? Do you have that on good authority, or you're just speaking as a scientist? No, I'm, I'm speaking as a scientist because when we got the first two cases, it was on the media, it was on the news that it was it was retrospectively, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, pinned down. Uh, so we, we, so what we need from the Nigerian government is to come to tell us that these samples that we got are from inbound travelers within so 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 period of time because that is descriptive epidemiology, person, place, and time. It is quite key. It is known that the first two cases that we got, we are gotten retrospectively. Okay, well, now, the, the question then again uh, along this same line would be, now, this is the situation that, <coughs> excuse me, this is the situation that we have on our hands. And you have clearly given the Nigerian government, at least the authorities, especially the Presidential Steering Committee on this uh, pandemic that we are dealing with, some agenda to follow through. Now, as you have also said, we have a challenge of even getting people to take the vaccines. And even if people go ahead and take the vaccines, just as you have also said, there's quite a huge uh, uh, gap of people who have not taken it. So where then does this leave us in Nigeria on this particular issue? Come again. <laughs> the audibility is not to... Okay. My, my, I'm, I'm asking, where do you see us going from here? Where, what do you expect us to be doing right now on this particular issue, especially given the challenges that you have listed out? Oh, dear. Well, I'm, I'm, I, I, it's like uh, Dr. Akiala cannot hear me. Well, I guess, uh, Markwe, you may yeah, want to take, it, take it from here. No, you can come again. Just go. Okay. I'm, I'm hearing you now. Okay. I was just asking, I mean, in your opinion, I mean, since this is the position that we are in now, what would be your recommendation going forward? First, to, I mean, you've given government their own. What should we, the people, be doing? Or are we completely, uh, you know, helpless? The surveillance issues that you raised, for instance, we had a conversation with the deputy director of surveillance at the NCDC. and says they are doing everything they can, even in partnership with the state government. So, in your opinion, what, should we, what is missing as far as the surveillance is concerned? That valid question. Um, it is time now for the NCDC to decentralize its coordination. Uh, 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 we, 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 we coordinate so heavily at the center, and the state tends not to actually key in into most of the, uh, uh, on, on the framework. Um, so let me give you an instance. When uh, we had challenge with HIV and AIDS, the NACA, which is the national coordinating body, went to states 
to establish SACA, which is State Action Committee on AIDS, and then surveillance activity that was passive at that time became active. And then in terms of reporting cases, uh, in fact, uh, a lot of NGOs came in, a lot of uh, public health centers were keen into the fight against HIV and AIDS. But for COVID, the coordination seems to be more on the center, which is the NCDC. I will, um, you know, uh, as a younger brother to the new DG of NCDC, advised him to have an interface with the Nigerian Governors Forum. Let every respective state form their own center for disease control with the same structure that we have in NCDC for proper coordination. So am I, I'm expecting, I'm from Nasra State, for us to have something like Nasra State Center for Disease Control just like the SACA we have in terms of NACA for the control for HIV and AIDS, specifically not for COVID, but for other emerging infectious diseases. This will be key. Secondly, you can see that people have started doubting the integrity of our test results. Our NACA, Canada, is saying that, hey, we cannot get your PCR, we cannot trust the PCR uh, you know, results. I, I was coming from Turkey some few weeks ago. The Turkish government said, hey, um, yeah, you just need to do another test in Istanbul. I did uh, one very quick instantaneous test for COVID at Istanbul airport that took only five minutes. I am my way. I'm expecting that our Port Health Authority should be quite robust, well equipped, that we can also do this test but we, we don't do p we, we insist on pcr yeah we, we insist on pcr and it can be done in five minutes can it yeah but pcr can be done in 30 minutes uh once you have a machine called the gene expert that can be repurposed for initially it was designed to test for resistant tb but now it has been repurposed Cartridges have been manufactured. It, in fact, some, some gene expert now can test in less than 30 minutes. So, and then we have 16 modules, 20 modules. So if you have like 10 um, a gene expert machine uh, for 20 modules, it can do 200 tests in 30 minutes. Even if you travel to Ghana today, you cannot enter into Ghana until you do another test in the airport. This is part of measures to strengthen, you know, a uh, 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 surveillance system, which is quite key, and people pay for that. So it would be good for us to look at this. And issues of fake results of COVID, how often do we do all the things of our past specimens from private molecular labs? So the government must also think in the, that direction to see how the integrity, the precision, and accuracy of most of our PCR results are being adhered to and enhanced. Well, it's a, fine, it's a fine place to live, Dr. Eshako. We have to thank you so much. I, I think it's quite instructive. We have to go and look at that list again if Ghana was affected and if they weren't. You know, we have to ask questions. Why wasn't Ghana affected by these restrictions? And we Ghana are, was not affected by you know, this restriction big, because big, of the measures they have in the Big lesson mm. indeed. Mm. We have to thank you so much for sharing your thoughts this morning. Dr. Akele Eshako is the virologist a public health epidemiologist, a senior lecturer of biological science department, Nasarawa State University, KEFI, and also a member of the West African Consortium to prepare West Africa for the conduct of clinical trials of drugs, vaccines against TB, AIDS, and malaria. Thank you for coming on Sunrise once Thank again. you, Mark, for having me. We'll take a break at this point. We'll be back in just a moment. Please stay with us.